challenge of the Yukon. On King, on your Malamutes! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. Race Moody, owner of the Ace Cafe, and Sam Bartlett, inveterate prospector, were frequent visitors at Sergeant Preston's cabin. Tonight was no exception, and King was stretched full length at Preston's feet. And I ain't telling anybody where this new claim of mine's located. We're speaking on pushing out for there in the morning. But my dog Puna says it might snow, <laughs> so I did. <laughs> What's the matter? All of you old sourdoughs are just alike. You spend so much time pushing around this country with a dog team, you think they're almost human. <laughs> I know how Sam feels about Kuna. A smart dog's a priceless possession, especially here in the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant, you're as bad as everybody else. Why, all a dog can do is pull a sled. You're wrong. Race, have you ever owned a dog? Oh, I don't want to. They're all right if you can work them. But otherwise, a dumb mutt is about the most dumb. useless... How can you say that with King Lion right here in front of us? <laughs> King, old fella, you hear what's being said about you? Uh, see? We understand each other. King's my partner. Sure. Duke Slade is my partner down at the cafe. But that's no sign he's as smart as I am. Uh, how are you and Duke making out at the Golden Age? Oh, great. Business is booming. I handle the day shift and he works at night. The mention of Duke Slade's name reminded King of something he wished he could tell the sergeant. It had happened that afternoon. Slade was a short, thin-faced gambler who carried the stuffy smell of whiskey and cigar smoke. King remembered how sharp and cold the air had been that afternoon when he'd been running along a snowbank trail. Suddenly, the great dog stopped and sampled the air. His keen ears caught the sound of rasping hoofs in the partly frozen snow. A frightened antelope was plunging frantically down the slope, and a short distance away, a man, Duke Slade, was leveling a rifle. That critter is just about the right size if I can nail him. <sighs> that did it, and she won't be too heavy to carry. From a distance, King watched Duke Slade prepare the shoulder as kill. The air was strong with the blood scent of a dead animal and the man bending over it. King was puzzled as he turned away and started to lope toward home. Duke Slade was a gambler, not a hunter. The great dog knew this was something that would interest his master, but it would be a hard story to tell. <laughs> Listen, now what's the matter with him? Oh, nothing. He's just talking to me, that's all. Yeah? What's he saying? I don't know yet, Race. But if it's important, King will find some way to make me understand. Won't you, boy? <laughs> if I didn't know you had pretty good sense, I'd think you were as crazy as Sam here. Oh, is that so? I can't... No, King. You stay here. I'll go to the door. Hello, Sergeant. Is Race here? Hello, Duke. Come on in. He's sitting right over there by the stove. What's the trouble, Duke? Oh, nothing. Just closed the cafe. I'm on my way home. Oh. <laughs> You're missing something, Duke. I'm learning all about talking dogs. <laughs> Pull up a chair, Duke. I <laughs> uh, can't stay. Had a hard night. I just poked my head in to see who was here. Uh, wait a minute, Duke. My place is just the other side of yours. I'll walk along with you. All right. Hope the weather holds out for your trip north, Sam. Here, let me help you with your parking. Yeah. Thanks, Sergeant. Thanks a lot. Well, good night. Good night, Race. Good night, Sam. Oh, uh, you don't have to worry about the weather. That mutt dog of yours will tell you when it's going to snow. <laughs> uh, sure he will. And I'll listen to what he says, too. You do that, Sam. Good night. Good night. It was early.
early the following morning, Sergeant Preston and King had just finished breakfast when someone pounded sharply on the door. Down, King, down. Wait a minute, boy. Race Moody. Sergeant, Sergeant, Duke's been murdered. I just came from his cabin. Slade, murdered? Are you sure? Stabbed. And somebody drug his body down to that footbridge near the river and pushed it through a hole in the ice. What's more, I'm... I'll put on my parker, then we'll walk down to Slade's cabin. Looks like one day's rest all we're going to get, King. Come on, boy. All right, Race, let's go. The interior of Duke Slade's cabin seemed to offer ample proof of everything Race Moody had said. There was every evidence of a violent struggle, chairs and table overturned, and reddish-brown stains on the floor. Quiet, King. It's easy to see what happened, Sergeant. Duke was killed and then dragged down to the river. Mm. See the tracks and footprints in the snow? They lead right down to the riverbank. It looks that way. Did Duke have any money on him last night? Well, something's wrong with our till at the cafe. And he was carrying about $40,000 on him in a money belt. Apparently, that's the reason for the murder. Men have been killed for a lot less than $40,000. let us follow this trail down the river. Come on, King. <laughs> Running ahead of Sergeant Preston and Race Moody, King reached the frozen river a few moments later. There were well-defined footprints in the hard-packed snow. They preceded a scooped-out path leading from Slade's cabin to the edge of a gaping hole in the ice. There were also plenty of red stains along the pathway. As he sniffed at these, King's nose wrinkled in perplexity. Here, Sergeant. You see what I mean? Drug the body down yes, here and... With this current so strong under the ice, there's no way to tell for sure until next spring after the thaw. Another thing. See these sled tracks, Sergeant? Uh, heavily loaded and pulled by a six-dog team. Exactly what I figured. The killer knife, Duke, stole the money and then headed north. Mm, you may be right. I'm right about something else, too. I know who did it. You do? Sam Bartlett. Sam Bartlett? Well, what makes you... I discovered the murder about an hour ago. I always come over to Duke's place the first thing every morning. That doesn't prove oh, wait, anything. Wait, wait a minute. On my way up to your place to tell you about it, I met Charlie Firth and old man Steinbaugh, who owns the restaurant. They both saw Duke and Sam Bartlett together last night, going into the cabin. Oh, what of it? You know they were together when they left my place. That doesn't mean Bartlett murdered Duke Slade. Oh, but it's mighty suspicious. That old codger knew Duke was carrying money. Now, what could be simpler? Knife and Duke, robbing him, hiding the body so there's no evidence and pulling out for that imaginary gold claim he's got someplace. Bartlett's gone. I found that out. Well, all of that's circumstantial evidence, Race. Yeah, maybe it is. But you can't argue the fact that Duke is dead. And who killed him? I don't know. That's what we've got to find out. Yeah. How? Get on the scent, boy. <laughs> yeah, look. All that hound smells is of blood. We know where Duke is. King can follow any kind of trail. Here, boy. Over here. Hmm, I didn't notice this before. What is it? Two sets of footprints. And there hasn't been any snow for over a week, so there's no way of... Uh, maybe Bartlett had somebody helping him. Maybe. King, go back to the cabin and get the dogs up. We're hitting the trail. <laughs> It was an easy job to pick up the trail of footprints and sled tracks. King ran well in front of the sergeant, his head low and his powerful legs breaking a path for the dog team to follow. Oh, oh you man, What's the matter, King? Sounds like King's found something. I'll look. What is it, boy? More trouble, sergeant? Oh, look, there's a split in the trail here. The dog team, the sled, and one set of prints follow the canyon. And someone else is headed west into that draw. Sam Bartlett's driving a dog team. We know that. He's the one we want to trail. Hmm, I wonder who these other prints belong to. Well, maybe some trapper or prospector. What do we care? The king seems more interested in these. That much loco. We've got to get going, Sergeant, before this blizzard closes in. Yes, I know. All right, King, lead off. We're following the sled track. Uh, what's the matter with him? I don't know. On, King, on!
King's mind was in a turmoil. He didn't know what to do. Love, training, and allegiance to duty meant following Sergeant Preston's orders. He never disobeyed them. But the great dog's trailing sense told him that this time, the sergeant was wrong. A howling blizzard was rapidly closing in. The longer he delayed, the sterner became his master's orders. Lead off, King. On! We'd better turn around and head for Circle City. That dumb mud of yours ain't got sense enough to follow rabbit tracks. King, you heard me. Lead off. King made a quick decision. If there were no other way to make the sergeant follow him into the canyon, he would have to use a trick. It was something he was almost ashamed to do. Pretend he was hurt and gain Preston's sympathy that way. First, he let his right foreleg crumple as though it were bruised. Ah, uh, what's the matter with him now? I tell you, Sergeant, if we don't get out of here pretty soon, we'll never Wait. make it. I think King's hurt himself. Then, before Sergeant Preston could reach him, the great dog suddenly leaped forward toward the side canyon and fell in the snow again. Ah, uh, look! The crazy mutt thinks you're playing a game with him. King, come here! During the next few seconds, King realized his fate hung in the balance. If Sergeant Preston could some way understand what he was trying to say, everything was all right. If not... What is it, boy? What's wrong with you? This is sure proof of what I was saying last night. A dumb mutt like that ain't worth the powder to blow him up. Wait. Maybe I'm the one who's dumb. What do you mean? We'll follow King's lead instead of the main canyon. <laughs> ah, you've gone, loco. Bartlett's sled tracks are right back there, Sergeant. He's the critter we're trailing. If King's wrong, I'm wrong. My chips are on him. All right, King, we'll go your way, fella. Come on, race. On King! On you, man of you! It was less than an hour later at the base of a steep cliff that King reached the trail's end. Hardly visible at first glance, a split log door was set flush into the rock wall. The great dog didn't know what it meant, but he was sure that Sergeant Preston would solve the mystery in short order. Oh, hold on, my What? Well, I'll be doggone. Look at that, Sergeant. A wooden door right in the mountain. What do you suppose it is? We'll find out soon enough. Come on. Open up. Open this door or I'll blast oh. it open. Now, oh, don't shoot. Oh, I, I haven't got a gun, and it ain't right to shoot an unarmed man. Why, come in. Duke! Duke! It's really you. What are you... I thought you were murdered. Yes, it seems to me, Slade, that you've got a lot of explaining to do. Well, I... I guess there's no use lying. You must have figured it out, or you wouldn't have trailed me up here. You see, I... I shot an antelope yesterday afternoon... I tore my cabin up and put the blood on the floor. Then I dumped the critter's carcass through that hole in the ice. Well, I... I figured you'd think I was, I'd was i been murdered, and then I'd get away to the States with the gold. Well, well I'll be... Dumb. You're under arrest, Slade, for robbery and conspiracy to defraud. Sergeant, I, uh, I sure owe that dog of yours an apology. Well, I think I do, too. He was the only one smart enough to know the difference between antelope and human bloodstains. Yes, King, old fella, thanks to your help, the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ in Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Al Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.